the anatomy and how to examine the cervical spine nerve roots. We have eight cervical spine nerves and also the T1 is included with them as part of the cervical spine nerves. However, it's thoracic number one. And this is because you have seven cervical vertebra and eight cervical nerves. And also the T1 will be thought related to the cervical area. So usually uh, the cervical spine root is above its named pedicle. And that means the cervical spine nerve root number one is above cervical spine vertebra number one. And you will keep counting until you come to C8, which will be above T1 or below the cervical vertebra number seven. So the examination can be clustered into C1 and 4 will be exact. C1 to C4 will be examined together. But from C5 to T1 will have to be examined separately. And the reasons behind this will be explained clearly in this video. So starting by the outline of the lecture, as you can see, it's divided from C1 to C4. And also we have from C5 to C to T1 will be examined separately. In each subsection, we're going to talk about that each spinal nerve will have some sort of sensory supply, a motor supply. And on the other side, sometimes you will have some reflex as well, but it's not going to be present in all of them. So we're following the same scheme for all the nerve roots. So for example, C6 will have motor sensory and reflex as well. C7, we need to talk about motor sensory and reflexes. C again, same thing, motor sensory and reflexes, but C8 doesn't have any part of reflexes. So it's not, we're not going to mention that, but you can still follow the scheme. And C1, it doesn't have reflexes, so it's only motor and sensory. All right, so that's our outline for today's lecture. Starting by examination from C1 to C4 lesions. If you have any lesion, and this lesion could include, for example, a disc or a tumor at the area from C1 to C4, it's usually difficult to examine the motor part of these nerves because they supply the muscles in the head and neck. And you're not going to get any specific movements for any or each of these muscle groups. So you will have to go by sensory examination only. And the sensory examination from C1 to C4 is very clear on this picture. The top of your head is uh, supplied by C2. And this part of the face and also the head and the angle of the mandible is supplied by C3. And at the end, almost the whole neck and the upper part of your shoulder is supplied by C4. So you'll just have to assess for sensation in these areas to get like an isolated um, sort of problem or isolated abnormal sensation in this area to assess from C1 to C4. So C1 to C4 is a very straightforward examination. You're just doing sensory assessment to the area. On the other side, you have C5 lesion. All right. So if you have C5 lesion, we'll have to talk about the specifics of C5 first. So C5 will have some motor supply and some sensory supply and also some reflexes. And we need to talk about each separately. The motor supply is mainly two big muscles. And these muscles is the deltoid muscle and also the biceps muscle. So if you can think about it, deltoid, what does it do? It does an abduction of your shoulder. So you will ask your patient to do an abduction of the shoulder and you can resist that to get an MRC or a specific bar. And on the other side, you have the biceps muscle as well. And the biceps can do an elbow flexion, an elbow flexion. So you, again, you will ask your patient to flex their elbow and you will try to resist this. The sensory supply is the badge area, or it's sort of a patch that is related to the outer porter or the skin overlying the deltoid muscle or the outer porter of the proximal part of the arm. Flexes, the biceps reflex. So we talked about biceps muscle. So the biceps reflex will be mainly supplied by C5 and C6 as well. So when you're doing that, you're not only assessing C5, but also assessing C6. So looking at the text here, so deltoid muscle, it's a pure C5 nerve supply. The most important action of the deltoid muscle is shoulder apduction or abduction, which occurs with supraspinatus muscle as well. If you remember the abduction arc, 
uh, it's below 15 degrees and from 15 to 90 degrees and also above 90 degrees so the ab adduction for the deltoid muscle will start from the above 90 the biceps muscle which does an elbow flexion the most important action for the biceps muscle is elbow flexion and this is supplied by c5 and c6 through the musculocutaneous nerve therefore to test the integrity of c5 nerve root examine shoulder abduction and elbow flexion both have to be intact to clear the c5 nerve root examination sensory we took that the sensation is distributed in this area right so in this area, this is the sensory distribution for the C5 nerve root. And then reflexes, we talked about the biceps reflex. And if you have a positive reflex, that means the muscle is intact. So deltoid muscle, we also talked about biceps, muscle for elbow flexion and shoulder abduction. So this is C5 nerve root. Moving on to C6 nerve root. So C6 supplies mainly, again, two big muscle groups. The biceps is still supplied by C6, which we mentioned this early, and that will tell you that the reflex again will be the biceps reflex. And on the other side, the extensors of your of the rest extensors. So here we're talking about the motor fibers of C6, rest extensors, and also the biceps muscle. So you're trying to resist the patient movements in the rest extension and also in the elbow flexion as well. So as you can see here in this image, elbow flexion and also rest extension and elbow flexion. Reflexes, it will be specifically, you have the biceps reflex. However, the extensor group of the rest include the brachioradialis muscle, which is supplied by the radial nerve. All right. So the brachioradialis could be more specific to C6. So it's purely C6. So that's why you have to do the brachioradialis uh, reflex during your examination to neurology of the upper. The uh, sensory supply is the area on the lateral side of your arm, taking your thumb and index and also part of the middle finger. Middle finger is, is also supplied by C7, but part of it can be C6 as well. But mainly index finger and thumb on the lateral side of the arm is supplied by C6. So the rest extensor group, that's the motor and biceps muscle, supplied by C6 nav. The rest extensor group also supplied by C7, but you still have to examine them as part of C6 examination. Weakness in any rest extension will usually be associated with a radial deviation, uh, sorry, an ulnar deviation um, during the rest extension if you if you have an abnormality with c6 only as mentioned biceps muscles receives motor supply from c5 and c6 that's why the biceps reflex is also c5 and c6 sensory we talked about the lateral side of the of the forearm and also the lateral the the thumb and the index finger and part of the middle finger as well the reflexes you can mention two reflexes here brachioradialis reflex and also biceps reflex Brachioradialis will be more specific to C6, and biceps reflex will be more specific to C5 and C6 as well. C5 and C6 as well. If we're talking about C7 lesion, again, you can classify, always classify to motor and sensory and reflexes. For the motor part of the C7, so C7 here, we're talking about the extensors and some flexors as well. So we're talking about the triceps muscle, and this will remind you that reflex will have to be the triceps reflex, all right? So triceps muscle and also the rest flexors and finger extensors. Rest flexors and finger extensors. So the triceps muscle, here we're talking about the extension of the elbow. The rest flexor, we're trying to get some flexion in the rest and finger extensors, especially at the metacarbophalangeal joint. So these are the motor assessment, as you can see here. We're starting by the finger extensors. You're trying to extend the fingers against resistance. You're trying to extend the elbow against resistance. You're asking your patient to push you away. And again, the wrist flexion, you're trying to get some resistance against wrist flexion. And this is the boxer position. Sensory, it will supply the little finger, the ring finger, and the medial part of your palm, and also the medial part of your arm. As you can see here, that will be sort of well, apologies about this. So the sensory assessment for C7 is only your middle finger, but it's not a very reliable examination because C6 or C8 can participate in supplying the C the middle finger as well. Triceps reflex, 
is usually seven, but eight will also participate in the triceps reflex. C8 lesion, you can classify this again into motor and sensory and the reflexes. The motor of the C8 is usually the muscles that causes some finger flexion. And this is basically you're asking your patient to make a very closed fist. The sensory will be um, the ring finger, the little finger, and the medial part of your forearm, as you can see here, ring finger, middle finger, and the medial part of your forearm. So this is the sensory assessment of the C8 will also participate in the triceps reflex. However, it's not really included here because triceps reflex is considered that it's solely C7, but it can also be participating in the C nerve root. C1 lesion. So one, thoracic is responsible for finger abduction and finger adduction. So the finger abduction, you will put a piece of paper between the fingers and it will try to pull it until your patient don't let go. All right, and now you're testing basically the a deduction or the adduction of the fingers. And the sensory will be mainly the upper half of the medial forearm and the medial portion of the arm as well. So to summarize, we have eight cervical nerves, all right, and we have one thoracic nerve to test in this lecture. So this can be classified from C1 to C4. That will be purely sensory. Despite it has some motor nerve supply to the muscles of the head and neck, but this is really untestable. So you're doing a quick sensory exam to the head and part of the neck and the upper part of your shoulder as well. C5, you need to remember that C5 can be classified into motor and sensory and reflexes. The motor is two muscle, the deltoid muscle and the biceps. So you're assessing your patient and doing shoulder abduction and elbow flexion. The sensory is the badge area, and this is the area over your deltoid. Reflexes is also the biceps reflex. And then moving on to C6 nerve root. The C6 nerve root can again be classified into motor, sensory, and reflexes. The motor, again, we're going to talk about the biceps muscle and the rest extensors. So you're going to ask your patient try to resist you in an elbow flexion and in a rest extension and reflexes can be considered as biceps, but most importantly is the brachioradialis muscle, which is part of the rest extensus. And then sensory supply for C6 is the lateral part of your forearm and the index finger and the lateral part of the forearm. C7 nerve root assessment can be also classified into motor, sensory, and reflexes. The motor is considered the triceps muscle and the rest flexes and the finger extenses all right and the sensory of c7 is considered the metal finger and the reflexes if you mention triceps here so it's worth mentioning triceps and reflexes as well so in triceps the triceps main action is elbow extension rest flexors is very obvious and finger extensors so you're trying to resist your patient in all these movements for c8 so we're rift with c8 and also t1 so the C8 can be classified into all right, motor and sensory. So your sensory part of C8 is quite easy. So you're talking about the ring finger and the little finger and the medial part of your forearm. And the motor assessment, so the muscle group for C8 is basically to, to try to make a hand grip. So it's finger flexors, which are supplied by the median nerve. T8, T1 is again classified into motor and sensory, all right? So the motor of T1, you're talking about the finger abduction and the finger adduction, all right? So finger adduction. So you're trying to get a piece of paper in between the fingers and ask your patient to not to let go. It doesn't have any reflexes and the sensory is the medial part of the forearm, which is a little bit proximal and the medial part of your arm as well. We'll continue the rest of spinal nerve root examination, including all the thoracics and the lumbosacral uh, um, nerve roots as well in another lecture. Thank you. All the explanation mentioned will help you understand the anatomic background or the anatomic basis of, of the, your examination findings. But to help you, you understand this a little bit more, 
how would you examine the upper limb neurological examination? You can also classify this into, again, motor and sensory and reflexes. So in the sensory part, you're doing the whole sensory examination very quickly, starting from C1 to T1, right? So from C1 and C2, you're going to the back of the head, as we explained in the picture early, and C and C3, you're going to the lower part of the head and the angle of the mandible, and C4, you're going all the way down to the lower part of your neck and also, also the um, upper part of your shoulder, all right? And then C5, this is the badge area, and then you have C6, and that will be the outer part of the forearm and the thumb and the index finger, and C7, that's the middle finger, and C8, that's the little hand ring finger, and the medial part of the forearm distally, and T1, that's the medial part of the forearm proximally, and the medial part of the arm, um, basically the whole part of the medial part of the arm. arm. And reflexes, you're only doing three reflexes, but the, the interpretation, what, it, what we explained for the whole video is how would you interpret your examination, and how would you present the findings in a way that you do understand the anatomic basis, and how do you understand it? you're able to able to put this in a clinical context? So the reflexes, you have three reflexes. You have the biceps reflex, you have the brachioradialis um, reflex, and you also have the triceps reflex. All right. So this is five, six, okay, and this is mainly six, and this is seven. All right. So this is C five six is biceps. And the brachioradialis is C6, and triceps is C7. For the motor assessment, it's quite simple if you think about it. So from C1 to C4, you're doing absolutely nothing because it has no motor um, examination. All right, so there's no, no motor. There is motor supply, but there is no motor examination. In C5, you're doing two things. You're assessing the shoulder abduction and the elbow flexion. Remember, we talked about deltoid and the triceps muscle. In C6, what you're doing is you're assessing the rest extension and the elbow flexion again, right? The elbow flexion again, all right? In C7, you're assessing the triceps muscle, so that will be elbow extension, and all the rest flexors, you're doing rest ex flexion, flexion and finger extension and in c8 you are doing finger flexion and finally in t1 you're doing finger abduction and adduction you remember the piece of paper so again what will be your examination of motor you will start by talking to your patient ask them to abduct the shoulder extend their elbow the rest extend the rest do um, a tight fist and then do finger a deduction and a deduction and now you know the root value for each of these movements